Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum. I am Kian Islam from BS Chemistry. My presentation topics are ammonium nitrates and urea. First, let me tell you the presentation layout. First, in ammonium nitrate, I will show you its introduction, its manufacturing process with the flow sheet diagram, and then its applications. And in the second topic, urea, I will explain its introduction, its manufacturing process with the flow sheet diagram, and then its applications. So first, I want to talk about ammonium nitrates. Ammonium nitrate is a chemical compound with a chemical formula NH4NO3. As we can see from this diagram, it has two ions. First is the ammonium and second is the nitrate ion. So it is a white crystalline solid consisted of ion of ammonium and nitrate. Ammonium nitrate is highly soluble in water and hygroscopic in nature. It means that it can absorb moisture from the environment. But it doesn't form hydrates, means water cannot surround the ammonium nitrate. If we talk about the bonding between the ammonium nitrate, this nitrogen makes three covalent bonds with the three hydrogen atoms. But it makes one coordinate covalent bond with the one of hydrogen atom. And the bond between the ammonium and the nitrate ion is ionic. Next is the geometry of the ammonium nitrate. The ammonium ion has four bond pairs which repel equally to give a tetrahedral geometry. So its bond angle is 109.5 degree. While the nitrate has three double bond pairs which repel equally to give a trigonal planar geometry. So its bond angle is a 120 degree. Next is the production of ammonium nitrate. We can produce ammonium nitrate when the neutralization of the nitric acid with gaseous ammonia. And this reaction is strongly exothermic, means that when this reaction takes place, amount of heat or energy is released. And this reaction is take place in circulating theory. The circulating theory ensures that I in a thorough mixing of the ammonia and the nitric acid. And sometimes we provide high pressure, and in a high pressure, the steam is produced, which we can use for preheating ammonia and the nitric acid. In this way, the reactive temperature of up to 180 degrees Celsius can be, can be obtained. Volume of the reactor. The volume of the reactor should be as small as possible because the ammonium nitrate is highly thermally unstable. So its thermal instability is required. Small reactor volume, pure nitric acid means the nitric acid should free from the chloride contents and awareness of an excess of an acid. So these all three factors are necessary to avoid the thermal instability of the ammonium nitrate. After the circulating chamber, the ammonium nitrate is entered into the evaporating chamber. In the evaporating chamber, we remove the water without supplying the additional energy. And after leaving the evaporating chamber, it is entered into the cooling tower. And its water content should be less than 0.5%. In the cooling tower, the melt is packed into the top of so-called drilling tower, in which the melt is so dispersed that the droplets are formed which upon cooling with the air fed into the bottom. And the granulation can be used instead of drilling because granulation makes larger particles instead of drilling. And if after leaving the pulling tower, the melt contains 0.5% water content, then we can use it directly. Otherwise, we have to dry it further. So we do it post-treatment. Post-treatment is a necessity because ammonium nitrate is highly hygroscopic, as I told you earlier, because of its high energy on its surface, which increases the potential of the molecule to absorb moisture. And we do post-treatment to avoid the caking. What is caking? Caking is a powder tendency to form lumps. So it causes problems during the packaging, transportation, and consumption. This is a flow sheet diagram for the production of the ammonium nitrate. First, the liquid ammonia and the nitric acid react in our reactor. And this reactor is known as a liquid phase reactor because the ammonium nitrate is present in the liquid form. The temperature of this reactor is 140 degrees Celsius, and we obtain 75% ammonium nitrate from this reactor. After leaving, this reactor is entered in the vacuum chamber, where we create a vacuum by lowering its pressure as compared to the external pressure. So we obtain 95% ammonium nitrate from this chamber, 
and then it is annual in the cooling flower. The cooling flower there is a bucket at the top. The liquid ammonium nitrate is entered from this bucket and will introduce a cooling air from downward. This cooling air condense these liquid ammonium nitrate in the solid phase. So we enter them into the dryer from where we remove the moisture and it is entered into the frills of ammonium nitrate. So this is the process how you obtain ammonium nitrate in industries. Now the application of ammonium nitrates. We can use ammonium nitrate as a fertilizer because it is less concentrated than urea. An ammonium nitrate advantage over urea is that it is more stable and it doesn't rapidly lose nitrogen to the atmosphere. So it is the best fertilizer. We can also use it as an explosive. Here are some examples of the explosives that contain ammonium nitrate as an ingredient. The first is astrolyte. It contains ammonium nitrate and hydrazine rocket fuel. 5% of ammonium nitrate we use as explosives. 85% we use as a fertilizer, 5% we use ammonium nitrate in textiles, and 5% in others. The second example of the ammonia is ammonium nitrate and aluminium powder, and these all are the examples of the explosives that contain ammonium nitrate as an ingredient. Its next application is mixture with a fuel oil. ANFO is a mixture of 94% ammonium nitrate and 6% fuel oil. So we can use it as a bulk industrial explosive. And we also used it in coal mining, curing, and metal mining. NIT uses. Ammonium nitrate is used in instant cool pads because its solution in water is highly endothermic. So the next topic is urea. First, it's introduction. Urea is also known as a carbamide. It is an organic compound. It has a two amide group, which is a giant pentacarbonyl group. Urea serves as an important role in the metabolism of the nitrogen containing compound by animal and is the main nitrogen containing substances in the urine of mammal. It is colorless, odorless solid. It is highly soluble in water and it is practically non toxic. Geometry of the urea. Using Lewis and Vesper theory, it is defined that the nitrogen atom will have a lone pair on them. So it is assigned a trigonal pyramidal shape. But when we look up some 3D structure of the urea molecule, it had a trigonal planar shape around nitrogen, which made the whole molecule lie in the same plane. Production of urea. We can produce urea from ammonia and the carbon dioxide. The production of urea contains two steps. The first is the formation of ammonium carbamate, which is exothermic and quantity reaction. And second step is the conversion of ammonium carbamate, as we can see from the equation. First, the ammonia and the carbon dioxide is converted into ammonium carbamate, and then it is converted into the urea and water. The first step is highly exothermic because it releases energy of 177 kilojoules per mole. And the second step is endothermic because here the energy is required. And we obtain 70% urea. The temperature of the second step is 200 degrees Celsius and the pressure is 250 bar. And the ammonium carbamate is in equilibrium with the water and the urea. Removal of unrated material. The unconverted ammonium carbamate and unrated ammonia have to be removed from the reaction mixture. And we remove the unrated material through once through process. What is once through process? The unconverted carbamate is decomposed to ammonia and carbon dioxide by heating the urea synthesis reactor at low pressure. So the ammonia and the carbon dioxide is separated and we utilize that ammonia and the carbon dioxide to produce ammonium salts. But no, the modern plants operate the total recycling of the carbon dioxide and ammonia achieving yields based on the ammonia consumed of 98 to 99.5 percent since considerable thoric loss occurred in the subsequent curling of the urea and the real yields are actually higher. This is a flow sheet diagram for the production of the urea. First, the three mole of the ammonia and the one mole of the carbon dioxide reacts. 
and it produces the urea. All urea we obtain in the first reactor, and in other reactors we only increase their concentration. Its concentration. So 33.7% urea we obtain from the first reactor. Then it is entered into the flash drum from where the ammonia carbon dioxide and the unreacted ammonium carbonate is separated. And again, these are entered into the first reactor. Then again, they are entered into the flash drum and with the reactors, we reduce its pressure. So from this uh, this chamber, the ammonium carbonate, which is unreacted, and the carbon dioxide and ammonia separated and again entered into the reactor. So this is the recycling process because of which we can obtain a higher yield. Then it is entered into the vacuum evaporator where the pressure is 60 and the temperature is 135 degrees Celsius and we obtain 99.7% molten urea. Then this molten urea is entered into the pulling tower. In the pulling tower, there is a bucket at the top. And when the these molten urea is entered into this bucket, we introduce a cooling air. This cooling air will condense these molten urea into the solid fuel, and we obtain the pellets of urea. Next, its application. We can use urea as a fertilizer. When it is used in this way, it usually takes the form of granules or crystals. These may be manually distributed by farmer or scattered with the aid of farming equipment. It is also used in fertilizing solutions since it is highly soluble. It is highly water soluble and often comes back within soil. As resins and plastics. This compound is also frequently used as a base product in the manufacture of resins and commercial adhesives. The nitrogen which it contains make it very strong and can really help strengthen a number of glues and tapes. Livestock feed. We can use the urea as a livestock feed because it contains a high concentration of nitrogen which can gently aid animal growth. So the compound is relatively inexpensive to make and it doesn't cost too much to transport. So these are two factors that boost its popularity in many parts of the world. As consumer products, a number of consumer oriented and cosmetic products also incorporate this substance. For example, hair conditioners are tooth whitening products often use it. For instance, usually a way to help the products stay thick in the tube or water. Ditch soap sometimes also include it in at least in trace amounts to help keep emulsified ingredients from separating. So thank you, that's all for my side.